More than 10 years ago, Dr. Leroy Little Bear, as well as some other Blackfoot elders, started having conversations and what they were calling Buffalo Dialogues. And basically, they were discussing the buffalo, the importance of the animal to the culture, to the ecosystem. And basically, from those conversations, they had, um, as Leroy says it, were of one mind and realized that uh, they all wanted to work towards the same goal, which was bringing buffalo back onto the landscape. So in 2014, uh, four sovereign nations from Canada and four sovereign nations from the United States came together and signed the Buffalo Treaty. So this year will be 10 year anniversary since that signing. And since then there have been over 40 sovereign signatories and thousands of supporting signatories to that treaty. This foundation has been in place since time began for First Nations. The buffalo has been, I would call the rebar of our culture for thousands of years. Um, the spiritual connection itself is like forever. It gives them that knowledge that these are real. They are, and they are now back in their land base themselves. The animals are in their land base so that they can really connect themselves. The people can really connect themselves to their past, to their present and into their future. Just a year ago, um, in my position here, I had decided in looking at my role as Indigenous curator, how can I curate experiences or curate practices? not just curate items. At our buffalo harvest that we had in July, the member standing there and he's holding the gun and he's singing. He's singing to the buffalo. And the buffalo is in the, the corral and it kind of moves to one side and it turns and it goes to the other side and it turned and it came back. And then on its fourth turn, it walked right up to him and it put its head down. And he was able to deliver one kill shot. Um, so for me, that was a really profound, significant moment, because to me it was that the buffalo willingly gave itself to us because it knew that our intention for the meat was to go to the people and, and part of our one of our most sacred and important ceremonies. And so at one point, the, the raw kidney was taken out. The youngest generation took the first bite. The next generation took that next bite. It was handed to that oldest generation and they took that next bite. So that in itself, I thought was a really, um, really neat moment to see, you know, that practice and it's being done by multiple generations. With the Buffalo Harvest, there is no just looking in. Because if even if you're sitting on the sideline, you can put in your two cents worth on today's um, um, uh, economy, your 25 cents worth in with advice, uh, with a, 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 just a slightly different way, maybe a little bit easier than what is normally done. It's just so wide open to all people. You know you're included in this whether you're just a little person, a little child, uh, or an, an old, old, old person. These strings, these straws that, they, 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 uh, that were left in place are now just beginning to make that basket of um, learning for people from now till eternity because the buffalo is one of the deepest most profound teachers of nature for we the people. And it doesn't matter if you're Nitsitapi or um, Siksikau, the buffalo will give you education and it'll always make you feel how so intricately interwoven you are with nature. So again, you know, grateful for the support that the International Buffalo Relations Institute has provided, that they've even provided monetary support to allow this to become a traveling exhibit. So once it closes off here at the Galt at the end of September, um, it will be made available as a traveling exhibit. I see the story of the Buffalo Treaty just going forward. <laughs> Of course, there, there's like kind of this idea of a big end goal, which is hooves on the ground, right? Getting more, more buffalo on the landscape. 
but understanding that that's something that's going to take a lot of time and effort to work towards. Ebri is not expecting that to happen tomorrow. They're not expecting that to happen next year, right? But what are little little steps and little things that we can do to eventually, hopefully our grandchildren's generation, maybe that's a generation that has Buffalo back on the landscape. Um, so it, it really is kind of looking at what can we do today to make our grandchildren's lives better? And I think keeping that in mind can kind of um, help people with, with this concept of, of Buffalo back on the landscape. Come on in on a rainy day and spend two, three hours uh, in the exhibit and get yourself reconnected to the natural world. 